Addict is spelled with A V A C T. That's funnier on paper, but verbally it just doesn't work. So there, there's a written on there. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, no guests, my friends, I am a craghead. I am. <laughs> I am a craghead. I love the website cracked.com. If you guys have ever read it, it's pretty funny. But what I love about it, if you ever go to cracked.com or have the app, it's informational and it is funny. Every article has information you probably didn't know ahead of time, but it's also humorous. And I love that combination, that infotainment. In fact, one of my dreams one day is to kind of have an internet show where I, I ponder things I've never known. I want to know what they're all about, but make people laugh all during it. But that's a, that's a whole other speech. I love crack.com, and the reason they do it is you can make people laugh while getting them educated. And I think that's the best way to get through college as well. So I hope this speech is humorous, but also informational. I want to tell you about an unfortunate incident earlier today. I was walking to the bus stop after my class. I was going to go home for a nap. I saw Joey, I said hi, and I got to the bus stop, and I sat down the bench, and I heard a... <laughs> I realized that my pants had split open. <laughs> and not only did they split open, but like a flap came down. There was... <laughs> and, <laughs> and of course I realized I left my laptop in the class where I had just come from. Oh, no. So I waddled my way back to the class, got the laptop, and strategically held it, which of course made it look like I was trying to hide some sort of excitement. <laughs> and I made my way home. The reason I bring this up is it was a symptomatic thing of something that I have been vaguely aware, not vaguely, aware of, but not wanting to deal with. And the fact is I'm overweight, and that was just the latest symptom of it. I'm not the only one family to notice this. This book called The Hunger Fix, uh, about healing food addiction, was a Christmas gift from my mother. <laughs> Some see it as cool. I, I see it as she cares about her family. And, and when I thought about it, there's really nobody else in my life who could probably give me this without me totally hating them. So, um, I, I understand her reasons. How many of you have ever heard of uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? You know, in the very intro to it, Stephen Covey, the writer of this, he talks about two things. You have a sphere of concern. Everything in life that concerns you. Famine, global war elections, graduation, Highway 50 traffic, all that stuff that concerns you. And inside, you have this circle of influence. Well, what I'm going to talk about tonight is that circle of influence. There are things that I can change. There's a lot of things about it that I can't change. I can't hurry my college career. I can't necessarily make more money than the job I'm in. But I can do something about my weight. And so I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that addiction. There is something called the states of behavior change. We get uh, two social scientists, Petrashkina and De Clemente, came up with this theory in 1983 called the states of behavior change. Has anyone you heard about it? Social econ? It's something I used many years in behavior change. It works for health, but it works for a lot of other things. It says in stage one, you are not thinking about your habit. Whatever it is, the habit that probably should be changed, or maybe you haven't thought about change, you're just not thinking about it. It's not part of it. In my case, it was, I was not thinking about exercise, I was not thinking about eating healthier, I was just thinking about pizza and skills. And two, the second state of behavior change is thinking about it. You are aware of the issue you want to change. Maybe you're thinking about quitting smoking, maybe you're thinking about exercising more, maybe you're thinking of buying fewer shoes. Whatever that habit is that you want to change, you have started thinking about it. Then three is ready for action. You start removing those roadblocks and you start preparing to make that change. And you get those things out of your way so you're, you're ready for that to happen. Then you have the actual action. For the first zero to six months, this is you incorporating that new behavior change into your life. It is not yet routine, but you have to focus on it. You have to make that part of your life. And then finally, you get to maintenance. You don't think about it. You're back to here, and it's now a habit that you don't think about changing. It's now part of your life and your psyche. One of the things that upset me the most this week about realizing or, or reflecting again in a moment is the fact that it's a pretty first world problem. 
I was looking through some magazines this week, and I, I was reading the National Geographic. We spend $1.8 billion a day eating out. Not just me, I mean Americans. Americans going out. <laughs> 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 Two billion people worldwide, 28%, wake up each day calorie insecure. That means they don't know where they're going to get their entire 1,600 calories just to maintain their body weight that day. Two billion out of seven billion. Two thirds of Americans are overweight. Clearly, there's a mismatch if we think about this. And so I'm there whining at home, worried about my split pants, when most of the world, a big chunk of the world, is starving. This is something I can correct. This is something within my circle of influence. This is something I can go through the states of behavior change to do. It's not easy. And it's actually, it's a pain in the ass. And I realize it's not just me. It's, it's, I won't blame society, because I hate <coughs> that say society's problem. But I realize that all around us it is an American obsession. You think about how are we represented in the world? We're represented by Coca-Cola. We're represented by Starbucks. We're represented by McDonald's. These are how America is recognized. All food things referenced. We are uh, the most popular mobile game right now. is basically a game about skills. It's Candy Crush, and you're moving candy around. It's, again, food obsession. We're in a meeting right now where food is in the name of our meeting, Toastmasters. I mean, there's food all over the place, all the time. It's so important. We have a food court downstairs. There are healthy options, to be sure, but how easy you can get to $1.49 uh, Whopper with Cheese Jr.? I mean, not that hard to get. All of us have behaviors we want to change in life. All of us have habits that we want to change. Maybe it's smoking, maybe it's losing weight, maybe it's exercising, maybe it's studying better, maybe it's working on our temper, whatever that is. We have behaviors we want to change. This is the way it goes, it's not always linear. Sometimes you go back, I have fallen off the wagon and gone back to here so many times. I was part of Weight Watchers for two years. I lost 25 pounds. I went back here. I have mono. It was the best diet ever. I lost 37 pounds. <laughs> I still went back here. And right now, I'm, I'm here-ish. The reason I'm saying this, and I'm saying this to you, is I want to make accountability. I want to go on a journey to do that weight loss. And the reason I'm telling everybody is because I know if I let myself down, I've lied to all of them, and I don't want to do that. I want to have that kind of accountability. So I encourage you tonight, whatever you're working on, Tell somebody else. Maybe tell the group. Tell me afterwards if you want. Find a confidant and say, I'm going to pledge to change this behavior. Lao Tzu said, watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. When you think tonight about your habits and your thoughts, think about your destiny. Mr. Toastmaster.